Hello, so I'm Daniel Thompson from the Wasp Oss Project and I'm back with a different style of video again today. We're going to experimentally try installing Wasp Oss onto this stock P8 smartwatch and the thing that makes this a tiny bit more exciting than it might otherwise be is I've not drilled this before. I only own one P8 smartwatch, this one. The back is not removed um, and I really don't want to brick it because I'd actually quite like to wear it for a bit to see how it differs from the pine time. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try installing MicroPython on it blind using Aaron Christofel's Daflasher tool um, together with some bits and pieces that come from some other developers. Um, so parts of the P8 port for Boss Boss were done by Stephen Moore and Fuji Pebri uh, and I've added a few extra Python files to stitch it all together uh, and we'll see where we go from there. So, like I say, stock firmware originally installed, I'm going to fire up Daflasher um, and hopefully it will pick out um, in a moment the um, P8 smartwatch um, and when it does I will select it. Um, what I'll add also is that if you want to see the generic idea of hacking the P8 smartwatch you should look at Aaron Christofel's YouTube channel, I'll put some links in below because um, he's showing this using his applications and his tools um, and much of this is going to be the same so it's the same um, modifying the bootloader. So this first thing comes across the air and it is going to um, copy in um, a bootloader program for the P8, well it's actually a bootloader installer. So in a moment you'll actually see it go through the install process when the upload completes. Um, so it's going to copy everything over to the watch um, and then you will see uh, as soon as this completes some animation on the watch. I, I say I have drilled this on a pine time, I've just never tried on a P8 before. So I do know what to expect. Um, and like I say, this, this at the moment will be exactly the same as Aaron's video on the same subject. So if you're not a Wasp Boss hacker, then I would say that Aaron's uh, display is likely more helpful. But it's saying erasing if you can't read that there. So Deflash is erasing the current um, uh, bootloader and replacing it with a new one that we will be able to use to install the rest of the system. Uh, so when it restarts we'll get our three arrows, um, three squares, sorry, and I can go back in the flasher, we find ATCDFU, um, which is the new name for this particular bootloader, um, and I again, I can go following all the steps that Aaron has laid out for us to convert the bootloader from um, running one of the Soft Device 5 series to Soft Device 2.02. .02. Um, which, in theory, I shouldn't really have to do. Um, because it would be nice if I could install the Wasp Boss bootloader directly at this point. But unfortunately I haven't found the recipe to do that. So instead what I've been doing is you take the... Um, you install the 2.0.1 soft device and from there I have got a MicroPython uh, bootloader, sorry, a Wasp Boss bootloader that can do the job for us. Um, interesting, we are now hitting exactly the same problem that I saw on a previous system, um, which is that it reaches this point, uh, it says that it is starting to DFU and initializing and nothing happens. And the last time this happened to me, I was able to solve it with a restart. And you'll get to see it after a break in the video. So my phone's just rebooted and I believe now at this point we should be able to correctly launch the DFU update. I do not know why this happens. It doesn't have on Aaron's video, so I presume it's something related to my own phone. Um, but yes, we can take this fit bootloader to install it uh, back down to soft device 1.0.2. Um, so this time when it starts the DFU, you can see it start to flash and the progress bar has started to move. So the so again, a short break in the video because watching progress guard bars is boring, but at the end of that you can see it reboot another time into the 201 bootloader, and I can go back, I can find a new version of the bootloader yet again, and now we're in a position to put in the WASP bootloader. Um, so a recent change to WASP is to create a boot bootloader daflasher.zip, which is all ready to go into a um, daflasher-based flashing series. 
Um, so that one should now tick away and if it's all working we will see at the end of this process the Wasp Boss logo running on the watch which will be terrifyingly exciting. So you can see we're finishing up the flashing process now. We reboot and with luck we see it has been slightly damaged, that's interesting. So we have got a incorrect version of the um, the logo. The logo's come up, which is great, um, but somehow we've managed to reverse the video. Right, so what, it's a one bit encoding, and I assume that we've got something that has confused the encoder. I just created that stripe down the middle. But I'm quite pleased with that. It shouldn't take me long to find out what's going on there. So we'll try the last step, which is putting in micropython.zip. Um, Again, this is set up so you can do it all from the um, uh, Deflasher program now. I had to make a couple of small changes to the, um, the bootloader to make that possible, um, just to uh, support the Deflasher um, number of packets that it sends, which is slightly larger than the ones I've been using previously. I mean, actually, it's flashing a lot quicker than I've ever known as well, uh, about five times faster, which is nice. Um, so this is the, the moment of truth, this is where we find out if we get to see the full um, effect as we get to the end of this process. Uh, so again, we've jumped through time, um, we're back at the very end of the flashing process, and this is where we find out if it works. We should see the WASP logo coming up shortly. And awesome, we do have fully working um, client. Now I don't know how much this is going to work. Um, we've got step counter looking like it. That was the reset of the step counter. Um, this is marvellous actually. This is, this is uh, almost everything working. So we've got the stopwatch functioning. Um, it's going to be difficult for me to see the heart rate because uh, it's not actually wearing it. I've stuck it down so it doesn't wobble. But I'll find out in a minute if the, the thing is working. We've got all our previous applications. Um, that's awesome. I, I am. So it does look... Well, the brightness works as well, but it's a bit more subtle. Um, yeah, that's terrific. Uh, I'm really pleased with that. Um, so we can turn it off, we turn it on, uh, we can look at different brightnesses, we've got the self-test, uh, button is working, crash is probably working, yes, it's never hard to get the crash to work. Um, so anything else in the self-test that's interesting? It should all be exactly the same as running on the other devices, except I'm thinking that we are getting different colours. Um, so we've had these challenges on the Pine Time that RGB values don't come out quite the same. So that is definitely showing a different colour now than that you would see for the same code on a, um, uh, a Pine Time. So the performance of the draw things is much the same as it, it would be on any other device. Um, I have some plans to um, increase the performance of that at some point. Um, I think I've gone as far as I can go writing those kind of blitting routines in Python. So uh, the next step to improve the GUI performance, and we definitely do need to improve the GUI performance, I mean 0.3 seconds to draw the screen, it's too long, you could do it two, three times as fast as that easily. Um, but yeah, I'm actually really chuffed to see all that come out first time. Um, so yeah, that's the end of the video. Um, Terrific work from everybody involved, um, particularly Steve and Fuji. Um, and I'll take a little bit of credit as well because I did the final bits of integration. But yeah, fantastic result. Thanks to everybody involved, we have Wasposs running on a second device, the Colmy P8 smartwatch. Um, and that's just been upgraded from stock over the air in front of your eyes. Um, that's how you can convert it to run Wasposs.